Yeah. That's called the, I really, I hit something here that stopped like a skateboard with a rock. Really? Oh, oh no. God, I hated me, that. That's which, not good. But you never skateboarded. I was a skater. What are you talking about? Mm. No, well, his no skateboarding way. was, I was the such kids a were skater. skateboarding and he was, and he was like, hey guys, that looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> Can oh, I one of the guys just hangs around. Oh, yeah. I'm like, pretty confident. Look, yeah, like Gerald went home and was like, mom and dad, I need, a, I need one. And then they got him one of the scooters, which is just the skateboard body, but with the handle right, on it. Right. And he showed up. Wait, and he was why like, do you feel like you need to describe to us what a scooter is? Yeah. I'm from China. Shut up. <laughs> I feel like he forgets when he turns it on. Like, yeah. oh, scoot up with a handle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so know. Better, you know. Yeah. I have it's to remind scooting, myself like I'm an American. I was yeah, a skater so. for four years, Which, by the way. By the way, four years. The, yeah, right. I was. What? Okay. Skater. Name me a trick. Ollie, kickflip. Okay, he just named the basic. He named the fucking okay, spice okay, latte okay. Oh, fine. <laughs> of tricks. Mix twist. How about that? There you go. No good. Better. And then when they moved to the razors, nothing scooters. for the mix twist. Yes. Remember, yeah. like that was just a less efficient scooter. Yes, <laughs> like, mm. so it let's really was. Take yeah. a scooter, which yeah. you know has which is sort awesome. of like smaller bike wheels, right. and give it the wheels of a roller blade. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you feel you every single stop. Yeah, but then you can do those split <laughs> things where they split and hit you in the shin. Yeah, I was oh, pretty good at it. Actually, fun. in Canada, a little known, we, they were very, very expensive. We could not get Razor scooters for the first, like, year. That's yeah. nice. So I went to Plattsburgh. New, that's how you know your country is a horrible place to live. When you go to Plattsburgh, <laughs> oh. New York, to buy the cool <laughs> <laughs> wow. Was it the, the like, downtown tariffs? Main was that it? Were we in a like, trade war with Canada? No, it was just they just didn't have it. Like Nintendo 64 games? How much? Yeah. Uh, by the way, hold on a second. Let me. Okay. Half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond, yeah. hey. Porter Black Garrett, Audio hey. Wade, hey. Gerald Morgan. Uh, Gerald Morgan A. Um, what were we saying? <laughs> were we, uh, the tariffs? No, no, no. How much was a Nintendo 64 game in the United States? I believe States? they were like 35 to 40. Okay. They were like okay. $69. Whoa. In Canada. People out there from Canada, Terrible. tell the folks below. Remember when GoldenEye came out when it was new? Exactly. I remember I got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think for Christmas it was like it, it was sixty nine ninety five. Wow! And I remember wow. because Jeez. one year I got Glover because they had this whole ad campaign uh, for Glover. Glover. It was horrible. Right? I got did the same thing. It I was, was like terrible. I get that game and it's what is Glover? So it was bad. a it was a video game Donald? that was just awful. <laughs> That's a no. Gerald joke. You should be a You should you like put yourself in his corner. Like ah, yeah, baby. <laughs> Gerald gave me some bad wine. Okay, no, seriously, Mr. Gambino Glover? deserves better. It was just a video game. It was similar to like Mario 64, yeah. uh, but you would okay. have to collect the... It was, it, was a, it was a glove, and you would bounce a ball bounce with a ball. the glove. That's so terrible. It was like so a, like bad. A marble or yeah. basketball. But it was so expensive, and we had so, so little difficult. money when I was a kid that I knew, like, that's the video game I'm going to get for the year. Yeah. And, and I want to, and That's I want to kill myself with it. And then I have to, and we didn't have Google, so I couldn't. Well, I, would, I would have to ask Jeeves how to kill myself with an N64 game, and he was no help. No, yeah. it's a five-step process. Who's got time for that? I no ended up switching to web crawler. Uh, all right. By the way. It is Mug Club Quarantine. Hashtag Mug Club Quarantine is the month. That's why we're giving you all of this content in front of the paywall for free. Enter in the promo code QUARANTINE. You get $30 off. That's our biggest discount since the Vox Apocalypse. Yeah. Uh, and if you are up for renewal, please do consider renewing. We really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, Canadians, l set the Americans straight below and uh, we, let them know. we better than we know, right? Yeah. yeah. And you know what else was crazy, too? Mm. We used to go to the Plattsburgh. It was called Champlain Mall, but in, in Plattsburgh. Um, we never had samples when I grew up in Montreal. Really? So I remember I went through the first time I ever experienced it. I got like, hey, want to teriyaki? I'm like, yeah. Oh. What? <laughs> Just stand there. Free? <laughs> we couldn't even return things. Zeller's was our Walmart. Wow. Nice. I got a pinball machine. This is, sorry, I just didn't mean to start this way, but I'm very upset. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> Zeller's it. was our Walmart it equivalent. Out. It was okay. called yeah. Zeller's. It had the, Ze Canadians, please, sound off so you remember this. It had the Zeller's bear. What, and I used to have the nightmares right. about this bear. It was very creepy looking. It was like, it was like a Teddy Ruxpin <laughs> on meth. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and um, they had a return policy. That wasn't. There was no return oh, policy no, at all. No, no. Oh, and so my it? parents got me one of those hand, uh, like, table ping pong, not ping pong, uh, a pinball, pinball machine. Yeah, 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 and yeah. it didn't work. They it, never it, did. It huh? didn't work at all. And As so we returned don't. it. My parents had the receipt. Yeah. So this is, they could clearly see it was broken. And they charged us a 10% restocking fee. Right there, my parents like, we don't want it. This is wrong. All right. Our, it's Christmas. Our kid wants his toy. Yeah. Okay. They exchange it. My dad says, I'm going to check this right here in front of you with the new one. It, too, did not work. 20%. Uh, no. Because what? they charged us another restocking fee right there at Zeller's. And so when Walmart came in and closed them down, oh, I thank the glorious. Lord above for the United States of America. Saving the day. Lord, baby Jesus. Jesus, Sam Walton. Thank you for Absolutely. your return policy. <laughs> uh, and for those of you who don't, who are not Mug Club members, you know, we're going to do this. Uh, 
other things talking about. We're going to read your chat, but this is uh, something that we do. There are a lot of sh uh, a lot of shows that we do and a lot of jokes yeah. that don't quite make yeah. air Mostly on Thursday or what you see on YouTube, or sometimes they don't even make air behind yeah, the paywall for Mug Club <laughs> at all. And uh, they just find their way, and I should be clear, some of them are because they're way too offensive. Mm, true. And many of them he are just because they're not he everyone <laughs> good. He looked yeah. at me when he, he said they're too offensive. You know why? Because, <laughs> because Bill plays both sides of the he fence. Does. He does. When really I said, does. let's do Mug Club quarantine, yeah. and here's the logo, but a little surgical mask, Right. I never know if Bill's going to be like, hey, hold on, that could be offensive. I said, there's a little surgical mask and a rice paddy hat, and Bill, I'm waiting for him. He goes, you put a zipper on that thing, make it a zipper head. I'm like, what? I cannot <laughs> yeah, believe. Yeah, you don't yeah. know where he's going to come from. You don't know. Yeah. You don't know. I'm sometimes a, I'm he's got your best interest in mind, and other times not. Can I ask, I know you already asked people to put things down below in the comments, but yeah. can I hijack that as well? Sure. If anyone wants to help me on the legal side here, are any of these jokes ones that should not even have made it into Scrapyard? <laughs> yeah. I need help. Uh, that's a good point. So right. we can keep this no. stuff out. Let us know. And off the air. Thank which you. of the following bits and or jokes or tidbits, anecdotes, if you will, <laughs> should never have seen the light of day at all. Mm, yeah. You can't answer all of them. <laughs> no. All of the above is <laughs> not an jerk. option. Nope, so welcome many of you for the first time to Scrapyard. I have actually never, take that fade off there, Court of Blackyard. Oh, I have never intro. seen intro every time. that intro with the Muhammad picture in the goat. Yeah. You have it? Yeah. That's, that's new. Really? The, it's new. That is no, new. That's in there. No, you just snuck that in there. It's every in there. time. He, he snuck that in there just because like, he just wants, like he did with the goat. He, he wants. It in. Oh. I think your fatwa had expired. He wants this shut down. So. He already has his application accepted to the Young Turks. <laughs> <laughs> He'll fit in. <sighs> yes, hey, hey. Ouch! No, you won't. Hope you like nose no, job. So, <laughs> keep in mind some of these uh, obviously may not seem topical anymore because some of them are very old. But uh, a couple okay. of weeks ago, Madonna made a video from her bathtub, uh, telling us that we should all be uh, a little more like the coronavirus. That's the thing about COVID-19, it uh. doesn't care about how rich you are, how famous Does it care about the are. fact that even though you're a woman, those look it's like man tits? <laughs> and Ugh. what's terrible about it is what's great about it. Mm. Astute, and uh, now very much like the coronavirus, I also want to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was horrible and that haunting, was horrifying, and awful, and yeah. she's just the. I, I, I am appreciative that she she ditched her English accent That's though. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. She's from nice. Saginaw, yeah. Michigan. Yeah. yeah, we all know that people speak like Queen Elizabeth from Saginaw, Michigan. <laughs> Saginaw, I feel UK. like there was a 50-50 shot like the, the police would have found her dead in the tub after filming yeah, this. Yeah, that was definitely, yeah. Like, that, yeah. That definitely just, it sounded like her final confession. Well, one can hope. So while his, uh, <laughs> by the way, I know her, uh, I've spent some time with her parents. They run a lovely winery. Really? Oh. And I believe are um, very ashamed of their daughter. While this, uh, <laughs> as they should be. While his trial was going on, see, originally this was written, hey, this is in the news, but it's not in the news no, anymore. No, 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 While his trial was going on at, at some point, Harvey Weinstein, there it is, said he once read a 546-page book about Winston Churchill okay. in one day. One? Uh, his lawyers are calling it the smart rapist defense. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we're going to see that one. We, you will see that in the comments yeah, section. Yeah. When you have to compliment a joke, is it really good? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was good. Your, your jokes complimented a lot. I yeah. do. Yeah. I do a lot. Gerald sets up, Joe delivers the punchline, and the reaction is, that's so good for you. <laughs> Steven, you, you must job. have written this one, didn't you? <laughs> and now my confidence is shot. But uh, uh, a man was hospitalized. This one's an evergreen, so it doesn't matter. A man was hospitalized when a woman bit his neck uh, after he peed on her yoga mat. Oh. This comes from the Baltimore Sun. Charges have been pressed by the man who told police that he was intoxicated and did not know what room he was in. Uh, I don't see what the big deal is, said Judge R. Kelly. Now, <laughs> yeah. it should be noted, or this is this was the alternative, right? Yeah. Punchline was it should yes. be noted that this was from the latest episode of Celebrity Judge R. Kelly. There you go. Oh, yeah. okay. There you go. Yeah, and, you can see, and here's the yeah. issue is, is because judge, yeah. often we write, so we write like three, four, yeah. or five jokes, right. um, and you see the ones that make air. So that's that's the A material. <laughs> and then sometimes you write many jokes, and, and just none of them are even... Uh, Passable. Yeah. <laughs> so you none of them, seven or eight of them. Hey, none yeah. of them could even pass as passable. No. no right. <laughs> I, yeah. I tend to just get an email that says, we'll consider this for Scrapyard. <laughs> it's not even automatic. Pre in there. Who gave you the email no. of anyone involved with production? You mean that's not you're real? Not, you're, not, you're not supposed to have no, that. No. It's, it's a fake I, It's an auto response. Shh, I get so it's many emails. Whenever he says, hey, I really? have an idea, I send him through the ladder with a crowd or a contact form. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then he tries to book me for a gig in Schenectady. It's really weird. Hey, hey, hey do, you, do you think Gerald's going to find out that we've just been feeding his jokes to the Young Turks? That's why yeah. this shit's so terrible. <laughs> they keep copying me. It's so weird. But they seem happy with it. Um, uh, back uh, back when the coronavirus thing, this whole the coronavirus, this, you know, you've heard of it. It was just getting yeah. big. Um, actress, I don't like this one. Actress Hillary Duff <laughs> criticized, quote, millennial asshole who were still partying instead of self-quarantining. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's right. If they don't listen to every doctor on the planet, maybe they'll listen to Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Step aside, Fauci. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, like, you know. I don't even believe in this. No. <laughs> that was a good one. You didn't, it. like, sell it Bill as your own. It. Hey, uh, hey, you need to make a couple of these and just do an episode for me and Gerald, because we like all these jokes. We do. We're sitting over here laughing. Yeah. We need to do Terrible. a reveal, though. We need to, like, rat out who wrote them. Uh, I that think that one funny. was audio wave. Was, was it wave? Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> I meant like in the future, not in the By the way, if you want to know, did audio wade uh, yeah. contribute to that show map? Nine times out of ten, it's a joke that includes the words hot, hairy ass. <laughs> yeah, that's the that right yeah. there. Yeah. Really? Nine, nine times yeah, out of ten. Nine, nine times out of ten. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. I asked him today, I'm like, your dad watches the show. Does he yeah. know that you write the, the hot, hairy ass? through line <laughs> and you said no not at all no <laughs> not at all does now. now he does yep. I did didn't know <laughs> do you remember that one time we had the joke who was it uh, who uh, said this is uh, the, their daughter coming out yeah it was Elizabeth Smart who was right. I oh, believe yeah. kidnapped and sexually abused for several years and uh, right. it was a story about yeah. her dad coming out as gay and she that's right yeah. and she was talking about how difficult that was yeah. so this is a true story we have uh, so we don't really have like a live studio audience but we have um, I don't know if we can can we even show with that camera we have like yeah, no. about eight seats there where yeah. either producers sit or sometimes family members of the yeah. crew mm -hmm. and so the joke there was right. Elizabeth Smart I think saying it was my dad's gay this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me and we had a lesbian <laughs> in the studio yeah, at the time and she was roaring with she laughter it, yeah. oh my yeah. gosh that's hilarious she loved it which didn't surprise me because she's gay it surprised me because most lesbians have no senses of humor and she oh. was the exception to the yeah. rule there you go gays are fun <laughs> lesbians usually not um, you know what's funny is if anyone comments and they're like i didn't think it was funny then they're proving the rule yeah, yeah. 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 exactly that's, that's exactly the rule because yeah. they're Caught you. <laughs> undoubtedly a carpet muncher remember the gun protests uh, <laughs> uh in virginia uh, locked uh. it up yeah, well, eventually, uh, Governor Ralph Northam's assault weapons ban that he was pushing, uh, remember, after that, yeah. failed. Uh, yeah. When he heard the news, Governor Northam was so sad, he lynched himself. Oh, huh. <laughs> wow. Is that that's even possible? A, that's a net positive. Because he was racist, yeah. right, with right. the black face. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Yeah, yeah. He, he didn't know if he was... He didn't know. He was yeah, he, yeah. in the... Let me try that one again. Was when he heard the news, <laughs> Governor Northam was so sad, he burned a cross on his own lawn. <laughs> Uh, that's, you know, no, that's, that's, I think, that's, hey, that's, I think that worked. That's not bad. It's not plausible. I think I that's the winner in the comments. This is the scrapyard, people. <laughs> The good and the bad and the ugly. Here you go. You know yeah. what? It just shows you. You never know what's going to work because I thought Lynch. I thought that uh, Lynch himself was funnier like than uh, Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> I thought it was too. I I, I, I vote for that at least. Oh, good. I vote Lizzie McGuire. <laughs> yeah. What? Did, you know? What did? What did Hillary Duff? I was about to say who's the other Duff? There's the other one, yeah, Haley, Haley Duff. I was Haley about Duff. to. Oh, how yeah. sad is that that I almost mixed up the Duffs <laughs> yeah. in my head? I have right. such a <laughs> repertoire a yeah, of the, the Duffs. The I Duff shouldn't have this information. Man. Like, can we get rid of that for for CDC statistics or something? <laughs> right, yeah. Can something I fit important. Something, something useful? important. <laughs> and I know that one yeah. of the Duffs. This is how. This is. Every one of you should just kick my ass. This yeah. should be okay. like an Acme cartoon where it's just a pile of dust and then it's mm. a bloody corpse. I know that Haley <laughs> Duff was on Seventh Heaven. Uh, what? Okay. I don't she? know why. <laughs> Hillary Duff's sister. She was what? the one that did the stanky leg after she was uh, lip syncing on SNL. The fact that you know that. No, no, that's Simpson. not. That's Ashley that uh, Simpson. Ashley Simpson. Simpson. Yeah. Was that Ashley Simpson? Simpson? Ashley Simpson, yeah. yeah. How I appreciate you injecting running? a little bit yeah. of racial uh, hey, diversity. At least I can't remember. Stanky leg. Is this yeah, exactly. like a Teen Vogue show now? What the hell's going on here? <laughs> no, it's just a bad show. <laughs> the stinky leg dance. The stanky yeah. leg. Stanky dance. leg. It's stanky That's leg. him Thank trying you. to uh, trying to be coy about the fact that he has all of Ashley Simpson's albums. But, like, what? but I'm still black. Stanky leg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ashley Simpson ain't got no stanky leg. No. You got stanky leg. I like myself some stanky leg. I'm not accepted among any of my peers. <laughs> Can we high five here? The, White uh, nor black. 
quarterback, you have no home. Yeah, I know. You do. That's why you need it's me. Too bad. We love you. You need me so that I don't thrust you out into the cold world that we know. Um, <laughs> so this happened back in February. Uh, Michaela Spielberg, not Michaela Peterson, by the way. Uh, right. Mm-hmm. Different. One of them, daughter to uh, the most prolific director, producer of all time. Mm-hmm. The other one loves ribeye. Loves a ribeye. Loves Uh, ribeye. Vitamin C. Nothing wrong with that. Fake news. Uh, So, Michaela uh, Spielberg, (laughs) daughter of. No, actually, and of course, I love Jordan Peterson, and his daughter will actually probably be on the show. It's just the carnivore diet, you know. Um, I just. Just wasn't good for my stool. Michaela Spielberg, (laughs) daughter of Steven Spielberg, she announced that she is uh, attempting to become a sex worker. Mm. Maybe this could have been avoided if her father spent a little more time raising his kids, a little less time executive producing cats. <laughs> Which is not so much a joke as it is yeah. trying to highlight the monstrosity of this yeah. cat. Yeah. Yes. Sort of observation. See, but this is one of those things where like, the joke is too on the, sp- on the nose, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, literally, everyone regrets his time with cats. It's too yeah. on the whiskers. <laughs> oh. Ah! No. Who's got the I want to hurt me. <laughs> you should. By, by the way, I thought like if you were becoming a se- like the bar's pretty low to be a sex worker. She's it's not trying to become. A, like, is she all failing this, at all this? All this paperwork. Yeah. yeah. Really? You have to, yeah. Is there a union? Yeah. I don't I think, think so. so. I have no idea. What do you do? <laughs> union. Uh, do you, is it do you, do 1099 that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're probably a contractor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you choose your own hours. Uh, <laughs> bring your own equipment. Yeah. Uncle Sam, he's always waiting for his cut of the pie. Am I right? <laughs> the biggest pimp of them all. Am I yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So disgusting. You should be able to do Quarter what you want with that. And Uncle Sam yeah. ain't got nothing to do Wait, with it. No, mm-hmm. I don't. No. Uncle Sam wants you. Yeah, I heard that before. Mm-hmm. Stanky leg, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it should be. Produ- this is a terrible show. <laughs> Like Louder with away. Crowder Mug Club Quarantine Month at the Apollo. That's just <laughs> <laughs> Quarter Black going, yeah. Stanky leg! Stanky leg! <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, according to doctors, by the way, putting potatoes up your butt won't right. cure hemorrhoids. <laughs> Oh, it won't. Uh, but Dang really, it. if you if you need walking around all the day, if you needed a doctor to tell you that, then uh, I'm, I'm afraid you afraid you need a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Different kind, though. Also, uh, stop using up all the wet wipes in the Ugh. studio bathroom. Uh, Tim okay. from HR. Tim. Uh, is that why the, ba- the bathroom Tim. is always filled with tater tots? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'll try That's these. Also, why you always hear ding when he goes in. You know? oh, okay. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that makes scrapyard. Yeah. Yes, the there implication go, was that his rectum is similar to a toaster oven. <laughs> Don't say it and warn you. You saw the intro with the scrapyard. You're still here. We that absolves me. Yeah. <laughs> no responsibility. Much warned. Uh, in a promotional tie-in with, I really hate this one. I don't. This is terrible. You know this what the is worst terrible. part is about this next one is that this whole thing that is now scrapped. It was a, it was a seven plus one. <laughs> what? Uh, I don't know what we were thinking. Yeah. What? Smoke. I still like the it. The one is bad enough. Well, then too much of a lead-in. Do you? On, do you go. Okay. How about, you you read it. You read okay, it. I'll do it. Wait, okay. In a promotional tie-in with Buffalo Wild Wings, rap group Bone Thugs and Harmony has changed their name to Boneless Thugs and Harmony. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the real okay. story. Yeah. Yeah. They also announced their summer. Tour alongside Run KFC, Shake Shack Mafia, and Southwest Chicken Salads with Attitude. Stanky leg! <laughs> I just figured that was like a, you know, to give you a, give you a punchline. What? what? Just because I know that Wade has no idea as to uh, what it feels like to want to swallow a knife when you have a joke that bombs. <laughs> oh, that's great. So I was giving him air support. I appreciate the it. The joke was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Bill liked it. Hey. Wait, the voicing was great on that. I mean, the joke sucked. Oh, I appreciate it. You read the, it well. Yeah, you did. Thank you, you did. Uh, <laughs> You're a nice guy, Gerald. Director. <laughs> Anything else you want to get out of your system here with uh, Scrapyard before we go to any kind of yeah, live chat? Okay, yeah. I, I want to do this one. You want to do this one? Yeah. All right. Uh, just wait, hold on a second. Just so you know, I changed it right before air Ooh. because oh, it oh. wasn't it wasn't offense. It was offensive, but it's not just, enough. So I'm just letting you know. All right. I just want to give you enough time so you could see it. Okay. All okay. right. Half Asian so, Bill. So director Quentin Tarantino and his wife have welcomed their first child. What was that? <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome. He sounded like uh, <laughs> Bill Superfoot Walsh in the first <laughs> UFC. <laughs> I was say, <laughs> it sounded like Goofy. So director Quentin Tarantino and his wife have welcomed their first child. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. From Fox oh, News. Yeah. Tarantino said the birth was the most beautiful experience of his life. Oh. However, it could have used more blood and and. Yeah, could no. always use more. Yes. It could always yeah. use more. All the time. An exploding human being, You've maybe. Seen I don't movies. know. And you know what? This was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we 
think crime. so. We're all familiar with this catalog. Yeah. Yeah. And no? I think I think you the remember. original one was like you. I think this one, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. it was we had a really late night. Right. It might have been after the stream when we were writing this. <laughs> oh, no. And I think it stemmed from me doing like a mild Quentin Tarantino impression. Yeah. And uh, McBrodigan, <laughs> for some reason, assumed that we had the br- the, the budget for the, prosthetics yeah. to make right. me look like Quentin Tarantino. Like, no, could have used, don't could have used more blood in N words. <laughs> it was like, but it doesn't work without right. the you know without that face that's been twisted from decades of evil. This right. weird yeah. Sam Spade exactly. face. Yeah. Okay, sometimes get you get the face you deserve, and then sometimes in Quentin. Tarantino's case, you get the face that nobody deserves. (laughs) (laughs) Wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Uh, Before we go to the meat segment, audio way, do we have anything from uh, from live chat? I believe we do. Yeah. Yeah, What do we have? Yeah. So MJ says, "Have any of you, Stephen Garrett, Bill Wade, taken the and and Gerald, Gerald's here too, taken the political compass quiz? And would you be open to doing a segment on it, like you did with the white privilege and microaggressions quizzes? Uh, I, you know, I think didn't Ben Shapiro do that? I think." So. I believe so, yeah. And yeah. so, uh, I think I did it a long time ago, back mm. when this was still on radio. Uh, so, you know, just more proof positive that um, he copies me. Uh, <laughs> I guess we could revisit it if yeah. we wanted to be unoriginal times two. <laughs> you and Ben are so similar. We're so yeah. similar. Yeah. You are, yeah. 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 There we go. We should just make Gerald do it, and then well, the rest of us will just roast him while he's doing <laughs> yes. it. Yes. Uh, I would do that. It's a yeah. bad idea. I don't right. think it's a good idea. You know what, maybe, if, if, you know, if you guys, uh, if we see enough people in the comment section who want me to do the political compass quiz, sure. Uh, my, my guess is I'll probably be considered a, a basic bitch traditional conservative oh. yeah. or libertarian really? I think people are often surprised yeah. like people are often surprised because I just say the, the weed thing is what people get upset like listen I actually think states should be able to legalize weed and I think right. it's silly that it's a it's a schedule schedule one substance yeah. and I yeah. think that CBD shows a lot of promise I just think that people aren't responsible when they tell kids like it's less than a beer no no some people can have can smoke and go crazy. That's right. a, that's yeah. true. It's a side effect. It's not common. Um, I just, but I also think states should be able to legalize heroin yeah. if they want to. I yeah. just don't think heroin's a good idea. So yeah. people yeah. are often surprised. Wouldn't recommend libertarian. Yeah. Yeah. Legal disclaimer: Stephen Crowder does not recommend. Yeah, it does. Of you course, not engage no. in hard drug use. Thank you. Or is yeah. it with Crowder? It's crack. Or nothing. Crack or die, bitches. <laughs> nope. Um, what is matter crack? If you know, as a matter of fact, I think there's a number on, at the bottom of the screen. If you order your crack now from lawnworthcrowder.com yeah. slash mug club, you get yeah. a free toy. Wow. <laughs> Hint, it's just more crack. Promo code rock. Yeah. All right. And we <laughs> and do have one police. more chat. <laughs> Might be cut with a little PCP because we cut costs where we can. <laughs> Angel dust. Uh, He's the drug pusher. One more chat. Yeah. yeah so, one uh, more chat. Resub- so someone says, resubscribe to mug club with the promo code. Love you guys. Audio yeah. Wade, you should release an album. I didn't know this said this before. Did you know? Oh, you know, oh, you know, oh, yeah. Plans read, for an album? Didn't read ahead. No, I know plans. No. Oh, well, you do not? have the voice of an angel. Thank you. Um, a male mixed angel. with the sweetest of honeys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why? Thank you, Stephen. That's uh, great. No, he does have a very good voice, and uh, not only that, but Wade's not arrogant about it either. Like Wade is very encouraging and helping yeah. other people with that. Um, I still don't like him, but um, <laughs> me either. I, I like you know, we've song. talked about this doing uh, doing an album because we have right. like twenty tracks. A so lot. much. This we've done year, parodies. Yeah. So but the I thing is, it's so hard. Do we put it in? You know what? That's another thing. Let us know. We treat it kind of like a chat on YouTube here. Should we put it on on Spotify? I don't know the best way to do it. Spotify, iTunes. I would. We could just make it exclusive Spotify, for people yeah. who are Mug Club members, so that way Mug Club members don't have to pay anything, and you can just download it on the site. But I have no idea how to do this. this. So I, I mean, seriously, I every time we end up doing parodies, I would buy a CD of our best yeah. ones. Like it would be, <laughs> yes. I would have it on. You'd put it. It'd be hilarious. You'd put it next to your Batman soundtrack and all for one debut yes. album and nothing else on the shelf. <laughs> yes, I mean, but I would actually yeah. probably ask. I'd be like, hey, since I'm on the show, can I get like a free copy, like a bootleg? That's and a no. So maybe I would wouldn't actually You're buy it. Overpaid as it is. <laughs> we'll just Damn take it. it out of your check. Uh, well, huh. You know what? Let us know how we should do that. I don't know anything yeah. about this. Uh, like we do the podcasting that goes up on right, all these yeah. profiles. But okay. now... Music, you have to master it, right? Well, because yeah. the yeah. iTunes the thing, process. is it even still a thing? The iTunes store? Like, can you buy yes. albums? Yes. What do you mean? Is it a yeah. thing? Yes, No, I don't think it is. No. So got Apple they, Music. They and, it's Apple yeah, Music. Oh, it's Apple Music. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know if you can buy it. Maybe you still can. I don't know. Thanks a lot, Taylor Swift. Oh, you're such a disruptor. Let's go. Let's go. Now we've gotten all that out of our system. Uh, Let us know if you ever want to see another scrapyard again. Let's go to the meat. 
And see, that was a short stinger, except, it is uh, so it, fast. except we, uh, Bill was laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> I was. He was. So we, had to, we had to redo the stinger. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. just I'm, because I'm just going to laugh thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a slightly off color joke about Native American yeah, uh, it was naming. That's, that's all it took. Naming methods. Yeah. I don't know if we call them methods. Let's be honest. Yeah. Formulas. I mean, they're just, it's, yeah. you know, take a shot of Windex, whatever comes out, call it a day. <laughs> it's it's infectious <laughs> humor. Is ayahuasca a Native American thing? Uh, I think it's ayahuasca. South American. No. South American? Yeah, is it? What's the vision quest the Native Americans take? It was vision quest. I'm, I'm <laughs> what did pretty, I say? I'm pretty sure that's like a late 80s arcade system. No, that was a right. film with Matthew Modine, but it's an actual thing they do, a vision quest. Yeah, I don't know about that. Mm. No, I do know no, about that. No, I mean, that. I don't no, yeah, know yeah. anything about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because you don't do drugs aside from those prescribed, which <sighs> cause peyote. gross peyote. physical... Peyote. 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 Oh, peyote. Circle, just I was peyote. looking for a yeah. lifeline because I didn't want to stop on not right. knowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. And he was playing it all cool, like, I don't know anything about drugs. Peyote? What are you talking about? PCP, DMT? Which which one do you want? I got some right here. Opens the trunk to his Jeep. I just remember it from Young Guns. Don't let my lawyer see this. Uh, I've been in there. That's hilarious. So uh, we've all been in there. I don't know what that means. I think we have. I have no idea. (laughs) Get a new shirt, Gerald. Um, (laughs) Nope, go Irish. What? what? Oh, I didn't even read it. I didn't pay that much attention. You You assumed we all were reading it. You should. Yes. (laughs) So uh, question. here's my question today before we move on a little bit, and I know people will be upset and it's controversial, and yeah, I don't really care. Um, At what point... Do you think that we need to consider reopening the American Today. economy? Uh, when do you think the ill effects of staying shut down could be worse than the virus itself? By the way, everyone here cares about every single life lost. Yes, okay, we do. none of, of us hate old people. None of us think the virus. Is Just want to be clear about all that. That being said, uh, I do think there is some bullshit afoot. So. <laughs> Past week, Donald Trump has been uh, talking about, and I, by the way, I just love, if you didn't watch the presser yesterday, I'm thinking, let me know if what you think. I'm thinking about oh, just man. running the Donald Trump press briefings you on this should. channel or you in should. Crowder Bits live because CNN cut out you should. to yeah, do the job should. that the media won't do. Fantastic. Did you see him present that video last night? He was... He presented, he came in with a video of his timeline. And a lot, just be really clear, because a lot, no, a lot of people saw the video. They didn't see the feed of him presenting the video to the room. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. So he's, there's a video that comes up and it shows a timeline. And he put, the timeline says, you know, in states, uh, China travel ban. And he goes. (laughs) (laughs) And at one point he's playing a montage like we'll do here that indicts the media where they're saying you should be more worried about the flu. This is not a concern. And Nancy Pelosi saying, you know, I'll come down to Chinatown. And at one point there's someone from CBS who says, you should worry more about the flu. And he goes, and he points. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's petty and childish about and you. exactly what we need. He was yes. defending himself. Come on. Yeah, they I, started it. This yeah. world could use a little bit more petty childish. Uh, childish. Childish? What? Cornish game hen? What did I stop? <laughs> childish. So uh, he, uh, in, uh, throughout this past week, and again, when you remove the Trumpisms, I think that what you're about to see entirely reasonable. He's mentioned a date of May 1st, but nothing concrete. Mm-hmm. Um, he has talked about entertaining the idea of reopening right. certain portions of the economy. Let's take it in context. Here's what he said. I don't know that I've had a big a decision, but I'm going to surround myself with the greatest minds, uh, not only the greatest minds, but the greatest minds in numerous different businesses, including the business of politics and reason. And we're going to make a decision and hopefully it's going to be the right decision. I will say this. Uh, I want to get it open as soon as we can. Great minds from politics and reason. And his chief of staff's like, note to self, hire a writer from reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nick Gillespie, great sidebirds. <laughs> I also hear Matt Kibbe has them, but I'm not familiar, but I hear they're good folks. Um, <laughs> what is it with, I've, what is it with libertarians and sidebirds? Yeah, I, it's it's awesome. yeah, I guess they're all previous rockabilly cover band enthusiasts. <laughs> so that was what he said. I, sure. I don't know. I think that was pretty yeah. reasonable when you remove the great Sounds, industries like yeah. politics, philosophy, Plato, um, <laughs> plated dinner Play-Doh. ready at home. I love that service. That's not even really. Yeah. Excuse me, um, <laughs> but the media reacted uh, as you would expect them to react. As though that, oh, which boy. was a pretty, I think, measured response, yeah. saying at some point we need to weigh, we need to balance lives and livelihoods. But the media has reacted. Uh, go. I mean. There's no way we can even start to think about opening things back up Uh, unless we've got a few things in place. We can start. The former reality show (laughs) star tells a story about American resilience. What he lacks in empathy for the the dead, he makes up for in his insistence that the country will come back stronger than ever. And instead just went with his mission is once again telling people (laughs) he's going to decide to reopen the economy soon 
based on his instincts. President Trump's new date for uh, getting the country uh, back to work is, is May 1st. <laughs> I see no Benjamin chance Button? that's going to happen. Mom, yeah, I don't think there's any likelihood <laughs> of states such as New York and California saying, fine, we'll just send <laughs> everybody back like uh, on May 1st because they're worried we would just have another outbreak again and the hospital systems would be overwhelmed you all are, over again. You are correct. He was. He is Benjamin. At the end of that segment, it was just a suit with a tie and a head. Yeah. Yeah. A little baby. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a very... And a needless budget yes. that, that wasn't recouped. Yeah. No. That guy belongs on Good Morning Mug Club. He's wearing a bathrobe. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, the gap is shrinking. It's the race to the middle. So um, this is remarkable. Uh, let's look at the. Let's look and see if there is even a case remotely for reopening the economy, or when that case should be made, or if we can, uh, contrary to what Rachel Maddow says, um, think about. No, you can't even think. We yet. can't even Don't start think. to think. I think no. we can start, and I, I think we can think. <laughs> We can do both. I think, I, therefore, I'm not Rachel Maddow. So that's, yeah. there's a delineating. Uh, that's how it works. Back to, was it Plato? Back to phil- philosophy humor. <laughs> it's like, a I'm genre. To with, not to eat. I like how controversial it is to be thinking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> listen, you can't even think, people. Yeah. I just want to let you know, just listen to me, Rachel Maddow. I'll tell you the answers. Don't think. Why would I respect your opinion? You don't even have mutton chops. <laughs> That's so, the ticket into the door. Let's look at this. Uh, you, people just throw out numbers in a vacuum. This is what the right. media has done. And I think you, context matters. You've heard me talk about this consistently. Context over content. When you take the numbers into context, the United States is actually doing surprisingly well. You can yes. focus on raw total numbers. And then mm-hmm. I, I think one person, uh, when I tweeted out an article that was removed from Medium, they said, well, why are you saying the per capita numbers matter more than total? Because if a country has 30 million people and a country has 330 million people, the per capita numbers kind of matter. It does. Yeah. Just a little. I think it's more relevant. You let me know which metrics you think are more relevant. Uh, that being said, we're still doing better than Europe. Which part? All of it. Except for Germany, which surprises me, but I think there's a coup in the works. Keep your eyes on them. (laughs) Shifty Germans. Um, Every time. The deaths per capita per one million, and you can go to Worldometer and and hit this, use this metric to list them, I think is what's most important. Because testing rates aren't accurate. uh, Infection rates aren't accurate. We don't necessarily know how accurate the antibody tests are. The death rate, the mortality rate, of course, is uh, based on a percentage of how many will die versus how many people test positive. Mm -hmm. So what is concrete that is undeniable is how many people have died from the virus, and then specifically, to put it into context, how many people per capita. So you don't see that number covered a whole lot from the media. Why? Well, a couple of things. When you do see it covered, this is important too, you see a graph like this. This is how it's presented. Let's bring this up. So look at that. That graph looks pretty bad, but keep that up there for a little bit. The reason that that graph looks that way is that they are tracking from when deaths registered. Uh, you know, this is what is called logarithmic, lo- yeah. log- 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 logarithmic, logarithmic, logarithmic. Logo, yes. log. I don't, I've log- only ever read yeah. these words. Arithmic. I've never pronounced logarithmic. them. Logarithmic. I have very little interaction with human beings outside of the studio. Oh, that's I true. read words and names. As you should. I mean. Bring that back up. Notice something. There's the same distance between 1 and 10 as 10 to 100. Mm. Now, I understand why that's necessary if you have a graph where the number is so exponential Giant, yeah. that it would all of a sudden end up off the graph. Right. That's not the case here. Let's look at the exact same numbers. And by the way, that presentation, of course, favors smaller countries. It masks sort of the contrast between the United States and smaller right. countries. Look at the exact same numbers. And our, our brilliant researcher, Reg, um, created a sort of properly spaced linear y-axis counting Again, while we're talking about response time, which is what the media is talking about, Mm -hmm. from the day of the first death, since that's what matters as far as response time. Do you notice something? Notice that? Yeah. That looks like the United States is lower than everyone by a significant margin, with the exception of Germany. Does that say we're losing? (laughs) <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. It's, no, it's like golf, Bill. You want to be lower. There's someone right there Thank right you. now like, mm-mm, yeah. mm-mm. <laughs> no, we're not going to be yeah. second to anyone. Nope. Certainly not. Certainly not France. <laughs> <laughs> Starts licking poles. Right. <laughs> Getting those numbers up. Change that graph myself. <laughs> well, and all you hear basically is that the United States has the largest number of cases in the world or the largest number of deaths, whatever they tend to throw out. And I'm like, guys, you're even if that were true, even if we had the, n- the highest number of Oh, you of mean cases, you don't trust China? Don't, uh, seriously, you don't trust China? China? Really? China? Yeah. Yeah, they've got four times the population, Sorry, but I, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, doing just look, fine. I read it on Bloomberg. Don't trust China. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I yeah. didn't believe it at first, but now I believe it. Thank you, Bloomberg, finally for telling me what to know. Yeah, well, yeah, I love how we actually act as though Bloomberg was written by Bloomberg. <laughs> right. Which, by the way, would immediately discredit all. Like, the reason Bloomberg is valuable is because he has nothing to do with it. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, if 
virtually all of Europe with the exception of Germany. Again, not a hoax, the virus, but right. it certainly at no point has been as bad as the media made it out to be. Exactly. Keep in context, 2.5 million, or if we implement social distancing measures right away extreme, the minimum is 100 to 240,000, right. and then the number was reduced. That wasn't in the absence of social distancing, that was taking into account social Fully. distancing. Some more examples, this matters, because just like climate change, Florida's supposed to be gone, we aren't supposed to have some kind of a rainbow fish, I don't Still know. Still there, sadly. Still there, Great Lakes record highs. Florida's fine. Same techniques, by the way, being used Florida as man. people who, if you say, I'll go back to the climate change yeah. thing. Um, New York, this was a good <laughs> example. Even where Donald Trump, I thought that he was wrong, where I was like, wow, yeah. that's petty. So New York, they said that they needed 40,000 ventilators. Trump sent 4,000. They didn't even use all of them. But he questioned their need for them. I remember watching the presser going, that's not a smart move. because They say they need 40,000 ventilators. I don't know what's happening. We might have to look into what they're doing with ventilators. And everyone goes, oh! How dare you question their numbers? And I was even like, well, why would you question their numbers? That's a losing battle. You yeah. know why? Because they need less than four. Yeah. Less yeah. than 10% of the ventilators they claim they needed. And he was saying, we should keep them here so we could send them to states who need them, not give them as a stockpile with no pre pre-existing terms to barbell nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically barbell hey, nipple. I thought they were both barbells. Yeah. Are they both barbells? They I don't know. Both. I don't know, I but let's both. keep the rumor alive Patrick. as though it's accurate. Absolutely. Well, and it's like if you Patch question any of the information, so p states can say, oh my God, there's going to be a panic and yeah. say, I need a lot more than you actually need. Well, we're seeing now, like, no, he was right on all of these points. Well, to be so, clear, so, he didn't say it was right. De Blasio said, yeah, we didn't, we didn't, we're good. No, De Blasio said that, but my point now is that yeah. when Rachel Maddow and company come out and say, well, we can't possibly reopen the economy, I mean, how could you ever possibly? It's like, well, yeah. guys, you haven't been right on anything. And by the way, it's the same attack yeah. Donald Trump doesn't care about dying patients right. in New York because he We're wants to send ventilators. Back to that. He was saying, I don't think you need all of these ventilators and, right, right now. Guess what? If you do, we'll send them. Right. And right you now know? they have a federal stockpile of over 10,000 ventilators. But yeah. if they'd have sent. So, great. in other words, they would have sent their entire stockpile to New York right. without the ability to send them Nobody to other else states who it. might need them. Yeah. So, de Blasio said, We're good. See, here's another thing. Some of these are anecdotal, but these are things that you heard in the media, and then when they turn to, they turn out to not come to fruition, they just move on. Like Florida, still there. Um, <laughs> Last we checked. Se <laughs> Seattle was a big one. Remember that you saw yeah. all this publicity? They set up an emergency 250-bed sort of army field hospital right, yeah. Yeah. Um, for the surge. Never saw a patient packed up and left after nine days. Hmm. Now, I want to be clear. That's not saying that no surge could happen, but it was predicted concretely that unless you get them what they need, right, unless 40,000 ventilators, unless we open up extra hospitals, right. people will die. Why don't you care about people dying? That was what was sold to us. And in nearly every instance, it's been a, a, a fraction, right? A fraction of what they've claimed. By the way, speaking of fractions, it's because it has nothing to do with them. Uh, hit the notification <laughs> bell. That was a hard pivot. <laughs> it was a I've seen better. bad okay. pivot. It was a shit. So um, <laughs> uh, notification bell. Hit all notifications, and of course, quarantine yeah. is a promo code right now. All of this, <laughs> if you haven't been convinced, uh, all of this is available for free this month. Uh, Mug Club Quarantine yeah. Month. You're well, and Benjamin month. Button at the end of that last video, the guy with the bow tie and the yeah. bathrobe said, "If yeah. we, if we." Open this economy back up on did May first. Did you really 1st. feel the need to specify that? I did. Yes. Like, Which one? Well, there was the one, one we person all out there. agreed was Benjamin Button. There was one person out or there the who movie. didn't understand what I said. Now that was for you. Okay. Um, so he said basically, if we open this back up, all of the hospitals are again going to be overrun. And I'm like, wait a minute. Can you show me all of the hospitals being overrun now? I mean, there may be some examples of that, but very, very few. And this is of something that I'll tell you. Exist. Hospitals are higher. Their beds, their ICU beds, are at higher are at higher fill rates. Yeah. Than they were in the past. So that may mean that a hospital goes from a typical. Uh, fill rate of like 57% of hospital beds are occupied, right? An occupied yeah. rate to 67. Or it might go from 67 to 86. And so they're not necessarily ready to handle this load, right. but it doesn't mean that all of the beds are filled and they need another yeah. hospital. And that's what we've been sold. So the numbers yeah. in context matter. Well, and just because it's happening in New York doesn't mean it's happening in Des Moines, right? So it's not right. like all right. hospitals yeah. are being overrun. There may be pockets that are. Don't sully Des Moines' fine Sorry, reputation Des by Moines. throwing them into the same breath as New York City. <laughs> Uh, just kidding. Welcome to New York. Um, there's no song for Des Moines. When you no. get sick. It ends after the half <laughs> of the first verse. <laughs> Uh, Welcome to Des Moines. Here's, an, here's, a, here's an exception, by the way, in, in Europe, Sweden. So Sweden is still actually doing better than many of the surrounding countries, despite not having a lockdown. And I know that mm, it's tough to compare all countries because it's tough to compare their, their healthcare systems. Right. And Sweden is actually more free enterprise based than a lot of places out there. A lot of people don't realize that, certainly as far as how they treat businesses. Uh, some people don't take into account South Korea. South Korea didn't do a full shutdown. Now, granted, they doxed their citizens, but... <laughs> They also decided yeah. to protect the most vulnerable uh, among them, quarantine those Sounds people. Reasonable. Yeah. I suggested that here with my Korean doctor. Everyone thought that I didn't care about old people dying. So, joke's on you, because um, 
I don't know why it's on you. Uh, I still care <laughs> about is. anyone dying. I want to be is. clear. Let me just backtrack this. Old people shouldn't die ever. Yeah. If huh? I were president, no one would ever die. Wow. Hmm. Not sure you I can make that claim. Credit 2024. So uh, <laughs> we do it. need you to balance it, this, the numbers that we've been presented, right? And you do have to say, okay, in context, how much does how much does this paint a total picture? Right. What can we predict versus what we know? And that's what yeah. matters when you're weighing lives versus livelihoods. Yeah. So we don't know a lot, exactly what the total death count will be. We don't know what the mortality rate is. We know that it's exceedingly low for people who don't have diabetes or pre-existing conditions, heart conditions below the age of 80 in Italy, below the age of 70 in most countries. Depends where you go. If you're under the age of 70, let's play it safe and you don't have any pre-existing conditions you'll likely be fine, wear a mask. Although the CDC said, don't wear masks. Ah, but now we're, go now back, can we rewind where I said, probably wear a mask. Um, let's compare that to what we know. Jobless claims, 17 million That's insane. over the past weeks. We've hit that number, I believe this week, finally. Um, here's a percentage that we do know. Wow. Uh, small businesses, right, who say that their business will still be intact, still exist, if the crisis lasts six months, as that young man, Rachel Maddow, was suggesting. No. Other than grocers, for some reason they're excluded, uh, 33% say they'll be in business when it comes wow. to hotels. 27% of mm -hmm. personal services, 22% of restaurants and bars, 15% of other. And to be clear, uh, there is a plus or minus uh, variance of 4% because of untoward massage parlors. Oh, I don't know yeah. why they were included. Yeah. It skews the sampling data. It's mostly Asian. People so are right. still visiting That's, the Chinese. It's right. fine. No, but no. the Census Bureau wanted to make that visit. So... <laughs> That's, by the way, people saying so. it will still be open. 33% of hotels will still be open. Wow. Not they'll close. Yeah. I want to be clear that I have wow. this right. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Say the business Ooh. will still exist after six months. So Those these are terrifying are just, numbers. And yeah. this is important. These, these aren't just hypothetical numbers. Yeah. These have real world impact. And I don't know why we are not taking into account when every other day of the year, you can tune into Vox, you can tune into CNN where they talk about food deserts and they talk about poverty, they talk about unemployment and how that leads to mental illness and all of the other auxiliary effects, right? Severe unemployment leads to, whose phone is that? Whose f***ing phone is that? I don't know, it's probably Bill's. All right, so. <laughs> how dare you? Get your phone on? We'll do it live. <laughs> yes. Was that Sting? Yes. I don't know what that means to play us out. Molly Crew. You've been in broadcasting for 30 years and you don't. <laughs> Who's got the so, hook? <laughs> uh, severe unemployment. Don't. Let's not. We're not going to edit it. This is live. Yeah, no, that's gone. Severe Doing it. unemployment. This is, this is ooh, my Seth Myers. <laughs> <laughs> So let's be clear about this. It's not a racial thing when they try to say it's about oppressed classes. No, but severe unemployment, poverty, it leads to an increased burglaries, yep. suicides, homelessness, overall poor public health in the long run. Those People are who are poor, yeah. more likely to have heart conditions, more likely to be obese, more likely to have diabetes, which means that you will have far less resistance to the actual contagion-like bug that we've been mm. told is coming around the corner. Yeah, and when economies crash, Stephen, we've, we've got this throughout world history. When economies crash, people do really stupid things, right? right? They allow people like Adolf Hitler, who years before was already put in jail right. because they rejected his ideas to get out and come into power. They allow people like Mussolini to come in and say, we're going to restore Italy to the prominence that it once had and say, well, all right, things are really bad. Maybe this guy can do it. They do right. really stupid things. And yeah. So you don't take that for granted. That's true. Any thoughts on that since you come from the, the country with all the dictators? I, uh, <laughs> I have all I mean, of them. Mussolini. <laughs> it's tradition. Yeah, hey, I'm going to tell you, dictatorship, it's going to lead clearly to having lower corona deaths. Just yes. look at my friends That's in true. China. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm just saying the numbers speak for themselves. <laughs> and hey, you know we're good at math. Nary a wet market to be found. No. Um, here's something else. I think you'll see a different tune being uh, sung now. Why? Because... And this is what's so amazing to me. I mean, and not ironic like the Alanis Morissette song where it's like a lot right. of that's coincidental. Yeah, that's not ironic. <laughs> we get that you have a Canadian past because, you know, you're foreign. There's something exotic about you. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like the whole, that's not foreign. The whole weird Al chic look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not really. <laughs> but it's not really ironic to rain on your wedding day. That's an unfortunate coincidence. This is actually it's ironic. Actually lucky. Because of all, because of this pandemic right now and because of the fact that uh, they have predicted these surges and they've tried to prepare for them. Hospitals are now furloughing or laying off workers. Oh. So this economy is directly affecting healthcare workers because there aren't enough jobs to go around. And then this is another one that is uh, to me, and I'm not taking any pleasure in this. What I'm saying is that when you just throw out hypothetical numbers and you tell everyone that they have to beat to the, 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 the beat of your drum, they have march. to dance to the beat of yeah. march yeah. to the D. I'm very tired. <laughs> I, I, I knew as soon as Bill, it came out of my mouth, the phone I would say again. dance to the beat of your own. I was like, what am I saying? Peyote? Video <laughs> question are we talking about? Ayahuasca. Um, here's another thing. I read this article. Take no joy in anyone being uh, unemployed, unless it's a 
Unless it's this next person. So <laughs> journalism has been hit hard, and I use journalism in the loosest sense of the word. Yeah. That, uh, so hard that Democratic senators and journalists are now demanding a bailout. There was an article at HuffPost wow. saying, you better, you better save the local news. First off, why? Second, yeah. let's keep in mind, these people already s receive the same kind of uh, stimulus checks right now. Just right. keep in mind, yep. they right. receive the individual checks and the small business loans that are available. In other words, that's not enough. And hmm. I do think that it's ironic considering that you told everybody else who said maybe we should look at reopening the economy that they were effectively Hitler reincarnated. Pretty, yeah, pretty and much, now yeah. you're saying, hey, that the economy has affected you. You should be bailed out at the taxpayer expense. No, 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 no. What? We're all in this together at this point. Right. Journalists included. At least you should be because your job is certainly non-essential. Well, Schenectady <laughs> register <laughs> slash Poughkeepsie Herald. <laughs> <laughs> you merged. Well, I, I it did. It was a merger. <laughs> they should have come up with a new name. It was a necessity. I they like had it. To well, I thought, I thought that uh, the Democrats were against bailing out big corporations, and now they're trying to bail out these these journalistic... No, no, I mean, no. They're only against bailing thought, out useful corporations. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. For, useful to them, right. maybe, not yeah. to the rest of I, I'm against. I, I'm against bailing out any corporations. How about that? Unless the unless the government stepped in and said, "Shut down your corporation." Right. Nobody, yeah. per, nobody patron this corporation. Well, then fine. That's yeah, what no, no, a no. This is a totally different situation. Right. But they were saying the money should just go directly to the people and not through businesses that provide right. the jobs to the people. But uh, unless it's this, I right. want to save them now. Yeah, uh, not uh, not projects. as it applies to the uh, West Texas Times. Oh, I'm running out of names. They need to merge. Very they need to merge with the Schenectady <laughs> Register to have some power. The Des Moines Morning News. I mean, I can keep going, the but Salt they're Lake only going to get worse. Gazette. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Salt Lake City Gazette. It's just uh, like 19 wives in a room with a typewriter. <laughs> <laughs> and one overworked husband. They, But the, 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 the synergy is amazing. One just types it, and then the other wife goes, ding, and she goes, thank you. <laughs> ding. <laughs> Efficient, um, though. Yeah, yeah. I thought uh, there was one per key, one per letter. <laughs> wow. One of them handles vowels, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's like the New Deal. It's just jobs everywhere. This is a horrible segment. Yep. So <laughs> it's just amazing to me that, you know, they want the economy to stay closed for thee, but not for me. Right. And by the way, this doesn't help healthcare workers. It doesn't no. help healthcare workers. And this is one thing, too. It doesn't help healthcare workers who are honestly at the front lines trying to do a good job for some other nurse to go out there and take an Instagram picture of the bags under your eyes and say, we're all at death's door. When right. you have other healthcare workers saying, no, 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 we don't want to waste resources. We don't need 40,000 ventilators. Someone no. who's not trying to politicize it because that actually would be more inventory than we could take care of right now. Unfortunately, yeah. everyone's afraid to speak out. Why? Because they'll tell you that you don't like anyone, that you want old people to die. That's not true. And this is just like the climate change issue that I wanted to come back to. And then I think we have uh, Glenn Beck uh, coming up after Ooh, this. Yeah. You know, climate change, listen, it's not enough to say, hey, yeah, sure, the world is warming. It's not enough to say, you know what, I think humans might have an impact. It's not enough to say, hey, you know what, we might actually uh, have a vested interest here in trying to find more renewable energy. But if you say, you know what, I just don't believe that the Kyoto Protocol, the Montreal Agreement, Kyoto Protocol slash Paris Accord is going to fix the issue of climate change, and we certainly shouldn't try and deal with climate change at the expense of human life or human beings who create industries that innovate, which is ultimately what will solve our energy problem in the long long run, all of a sudden, you're an apostate. You're a pariah. You have no business speaking even at the table. Here, 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 it's the same thing that's happening here right now. We're not saying that this is a hoax. What we are saying, and I've been saying this all along, and I see a lot of conservatives now yeah. sort of walking it back. They're saying, this is, a, this is something we need to get ahead of. Of course, we need to be ahead of this, and I think we've done a pretty good job. But we've always been saying, and I, can, and I maintain this, I won't be shamed into panic, we need to, and people don't like saying this because there are lives at stake. There are always lives at stake. That Everything. being said, yeah, when you make maneuvers in war, there are lives at stake. Yep. When, you, when you decide who goes to the lifeboats first, you still have to make a risk assessment call with lives at stake. And in this case, when we know the ramifications of the kind of unemployment and crippling economy that could be seen for generations to come, there does need to be a balance between saving lives from a virus, uh, of none of the models have proven to be accurate, versus the livelihoods of everyone who will be alive, which is 99.999999. I don't even have a calculator that goes that far. I was too busy <laughs> spelling boobs on it upside yeah. down. So fun.
99.999, I lost my train of thought, of people who will still be around after this virus. And what I, what I think is most important is anyone out there and people who've been feeling this for a long time, I want you to speak out about this. I want you to speak out with everyone that you know in your personal lives, any platform you have, just try and present it from a compassionate point of view and with balance. And when these people like Rachel Maddow talk about Donald Trump or Brian Stelter literally said that Donald Trump has no empathy for the lives lost, or they say, you know what, if you believe that, you don't care about the country. No, no, I'm talking about all of the people out there who are screaming for a job. They are clawing and biting to try and preserve their livelihood. Don't say that when I say we need to take their lives into account, their livelihoods, that I don't care about the country. They are the country, and that's the point. Okay, let's go to Glenn Beck after. My knee is like... Let's all try some waffle. Let's all try some waffle. Let's all try some waffle because they are badass. Walther Firearms. Quality firearm engineering for over a century. Sleek lines, butter smooth triggers, and unparalleled reliability. Walther created the first semi automatic pistol in 1908, and they've made the best ever since. So the next chance you have, demand loudly and proudly. I'll try the Walther. Let's all try some Walther because they are best. I feel like I don't really have the hips like the dance. You know, sometimes people move their hips. You're like, oh my gosh, yeah. it's like a yeah. it's like a bobblehead doll, but on, instead of the head, it's the hips. It's like, but I'm pretty loose in the shoulders. I mean, really I got pretty shoulder work. Tr- yeah, because I can dislocate them it's important. because of my connective tissue damage. So it's fun. Right. <laughs> At least you can use it. <laughs> At least I can use it. Uh, our next guest, you know him. Uh, of course, he's been on the show many times. And uh, I've known him for, gosh, probably going on a, is it a decade now? Wow. Yeah. I have no idea. I feel old, but he's older because he has white hair. Uh, <laughs> at Glenn Beck on the Twitter. And of course, you know him, The Blaze. Uh, he has his shows that are there, both his radio show and his television show. His new book is Arguing with Socialists, which I don't know why. I don't have the book because I didn't get the link for it until right. recently. So I don't have a physical copy. Mr. Glenn Beck, how are you, sir? Very good. I, I can't believe we didn't deliver a copy to you. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want anyone there to be fired, but I assume you'll handle business. Um, uh, we, <laughs> we're, we're, I don't know. I'm a little busy uh, polishing my nipple rings today. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. Well, here's uh, the thing. You were okay. So I have two things. I want to go to your tattoos uh, and uh, the Cuomo uh-huh. nipple rings. But before that, where, where's the book available? Right. Just to be clear. Uh, any place that is open. Okay, that's so, right. So nowhere. It's open, you can buy it. It's at a bookstore, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, by the way, there's an, there's an Amazon Barnes & Noble Cafe. You see that recently? It's really? Barnes & Noble uh, Cafe right next to a Starbucks. And okay. the Barnes & Noble Cafe has that's definitively be- less books or magazines mm-hmm. than cafe items. Have you seen these recently, Glenn? Yes, I have. Yeah. There's one in, there's one in uh, South Lake down here. And it's, it's like 40,000 square feet, and most of it is just for coffee now. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like it's and I don't crazy. Even just, and it just says we proudly carry Starbucks. I'm like, well, there's a Starbucks it's literally right, right next door. I was here for the books, yeah. and I thought, well, maybe I'll grab a coffee when I go buy a book. Only, But there are no yeah. books. It's just coffee. Uh, and not good coffee either. So, okay, I want to go back to your tab. We'll go back to the book. But before that, nipple rings. You, we were talking about this before <laughs> we went on air. You think that, Mr. Uh, G- Governor Cuomo, you think it's an actual nipple ring? I think he might have had like a... Like I, a think, I think it's... Yeah. No, I think it's two, uh, Stephen. I think <laughs> yes. he's got one here and one here. And uh, yeah. they're big, they're nasty, and I don't want to think about them, honestly. I mean, they, they, they may have started here, but I think they're actually down here mm. now. Yes, yeah. Uh, and that was even more disturbing. It's all yeah. the added weight. Heavy, yeah. yeah, he's a, he's a stand-in devil for National Geographic yeah. specials. Yeah. They just put in Cuomo. <laughs> yeah. or, uh, so you just guess from up close. They zoom out, you're like, oh, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Um, I don't know. And here's the thing, I wouldn't... <laughs> I wouldn't have so much of a problem with it if he didn't hide it. Yeah. Like if someone nipple rings Folsom Street Fair, let your freak, freak flag fly, but right. you're trying to act like the kind of person who would be at a Barnes and Noble cafe, yeah. <laughs> but you have the nipple rings. It's like pick a lane. Yeah. Well, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
I don't want to see him dressed like one of the village people. I don't want to see him shirtless in chaps and oh. nip, nipple rings doing the governor's work. That is a gross uh, mischaracterization. So he's trying to hide it. That is a gross mischaracterization you, of what you... happens at the Folsom Street Fair. It is a family-friendly event. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> How dare you, sir? I go there. I have my kids for drag drag time, story yeah, time, whatever. Yes. Every all yeah. the time. Where the rides are. Yeah. Right. Totally. Um, so how are you, how are you saying he's hiding them? Well, because he's because hi- in other words he sh- in other words if he just lifted it said hey look at my nipple ring big right. deal and moved on but what? they're in a golf shirt I think he just made the mistake <laughs> he made the mistake of wearing the wrong fabric golf shirt like uh, if he'd have worn the yeah. traditional sort of terry cloth mistake. cotton but he wore the peak cotton yeah. so it's very sheer mm-hmm. so I don't think he intended that and then he you know he didn't answer he needs to answer for his nipple bars yeah. yep if he would have answered then it would have been fine but right. it still would have been creepy and I don't want to think about his nipple rings anymore well uh, I'll be sure to bring. Up later in the interview because uh, it's a spite <laughs> topic. Um, and then the other thing is, a lot of people don't know you have a lot of tattoos, right? So you no nipple rings. But no, you do I have, have tattoos. one. What? I thought we well, have the one on your calf, right? Yeah, I have one. Okay, I thought there yeah, was more on, around my ankle. Okay, well, no. No, no, I, not I, that you've ever seen. Well, I remember you showing it because I was. We were at Fox, and I was uh, kind of like, I guess, sort of sub and uh, co-hosting because you were answering questions with the audience, and so I was fielding questions. And one of them was about your tattoo, and I had never known that you had a tattoo, and you showed it. And um, wh- what is it on your calf, ankle? I mean, it's 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 a pretty uh, it's a pretty elaborate tattoo. Okay, we can see it. There we go. There, well, yeah, can you see oh, that? Yeah, no, almost. you're gonna have to do some yoga. Okay, I'm not as nimble as you are. No, well, I know that's. Uh, uh, we're not it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's from an old uh, Gaelic uh, chalice, uh, so it's quite elaborate. That's uh, right. It. And then it has my children's birthdays. Okay, yeah. that's why you were so offended when I made a joke about it. Uh, I remember you said something about Gaelic, and I said, "What if it says like, hey, this guy's Gaelic?" <laughs> Uh, and you looked at me like you were very sad. <laughs> like, is this something that meant a lot to you? Like, and I was like, no, it's just a joke. I don't know. I shouldn't be at this network hosting. No. Uh, so, yeah. uh, that's about it. Okay. All Tell right. me about your book, uh, yeah. Arguing with Socialists. I remember arguing with idiots because I had started my career. That was in 2009. And um, I really loved that uh-huh. book. I remember that book was uh, kind of what put me on the path to learning more, and I use it as a reference in my Detroit video, um, or I, I, I use the references from your book, uh, that one specifically addressed the idea yeah. of hybrid cars and how they were actually losing manufacturers' uh, money on each one sold, even mm-hmm. the Prius, I believe, up until 2009. I don't know what it is right now. So mm-hmm. it was a really, I, I mean, I know a lot of people know you for your style and you're, you know, you're more of an op-ed person, but there was, there was some information there that I think uh, really would have served people well. So. This here, this is m- similar because I, I mean, arguing with idiots, obviously different. Arguing with socialists, this is sounds redundant, <laughs> right? So it's really not different. It's right. really not different. Just <laughs> right. updated uh, idiots to socialists. Yes, um, Stephen, this is the reason why what you just said is what I've heard about that book for ten years. Um, it was really effective for people that were your age at the time, especially. Yeah, uh, because it has. You know, a hundred page of really fine print new, um, uh, footnotes yes. at the end, so you don't ever have to quote me. You know, you have all of the information there. Right. And it's also, I mean, because I'm riddled with ADD, it's also full of charts and graphs and, you know, comics and everything else. Right. Um, and we tried to look for the, the best arguments against capitalism Mm -hmm. uh and so there's no straw men in here it's not the it's you know it's not the stereotypical conservative just throwing you know lame uh complaints about capitalism and then just raw if you want to live in communist china why don't you get the hell out that kind of thing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exactly right. Yes. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly. So we tried to take and, and really look, because there's bad things about the free market. Sure. Uh, and there's bad things about socialism, a lot more over here. Um, but, you know, let's look at what the real arguments are. And if you have an open mind at all, uh, you know, you, you want to serve people the best way you can. So which is the, which, which, which one works, which one doesn't. And I appreciate the self-awareness there and that you say, we don't have to quote you. It doesn't mean that your arguments are illegitimate at all, but I know, mm-hmm. for example, I always, that's always we, why we provide sources here that are usually the New York times. You know, we get right. them from PubMed because I know if someone says, well, Steven Crowder, I go, don't list me as a source because I'm an ass. 
people. <laughs> and no one will listen to you. So yeah. not that you are, but that's why. I, but uh, you know right. that people will see it as biased. So you list your original uh, references, right. which is what no. really helped me with arguing with idiots. Yeah, I remember using them quite a bit. Then going yeah, online I mean, and searching it's, it. It's, yeah, you're a complete idiot if you quote if you quote me or you quote you. Right. Because. The media has done a good job, and quite honestly, I have been very effective at smearing myself as well. Um, the media has done a great job on making us uh, losers or you know, people you can't trust or just hacks that don't know what they're talking about. So if you believe we do, well, good. Get the book. And we've taken all of the facts from the New York Times. Any time I found something from the Heritage Foundation, I went back to the researchers and said, go find it from a source that the left appreciates. Right. Don't take it from the Heritage Foundation. Take it from something that the left will say, OK, right. well, all right, it's the New York Times. You're right. And they came back. You're like, not Anna Kasparian. Go back to the think tank. Bring me something useful. Um, this is important, though, because we've done this. You know, when we prepare for a change, my mind, uh, I sit down with a brilliant researcher, Red who's literally more than a mental level IQ and squats like 700 pounds. Scary, He's the scariest person on earth. Uh, but um, we always try and prepare for, because we have to, right? We're going to go out and it's a, it's a free-for-all. It's four yeah. hours of anyone, including professors. Um, and with socialism, it's very common to say, well, there are socialist elements. And so we've always focused not so much on totalitarian Marxism, but really sort of the Norwegian socialist model. I think you refer to it in your book as the Swedish-style sure. socialism, um, because that's what's often, yeah, yeah. it's the socialism du jour. Right? They used to point to Canada when I lived in Canada, and they said, right. well, that doesn't work. They used to point to France or maybe Belgium, and they go, well, that doesn't work. So now they point to Sweden. Can you tell me how you define that or, or, or why it's something that you address in the book? Yeah, so Sweden is, A, it's not a socialist country. It is more free uh, on its industry than we are. It has fewer regulations. It, uh, out of the uh, Norwegian countries, uh, I think... Uh, three of them have lower taxes than we do. Yeah. Um, it, it is not a socialist system. It used to be, and then it failed around the time ABBA started to fail. Right. And they got away from ABBA, and they got away from socialism. And then they brought and back Pierce Brosnan covering and ABBA, and they were like, shut! <laughs> Why do you keep furring at the interfaces? <laughs> so bad. So they got rid of that because they couldn't afford it anymore. It wasn't working. The taxes were getting way too high, and it was everything was collapsing. So they knew they had to uh, get out of the socialist game, and they become very very, very free market. Right. Uh, I mean, a socialist country doesn't come up with IKEA where you can buy furniture you have to put together and have Swedish meatballs. Right. And no That's return not policy. A socialist country that goes. No return policy right. whatsoever. It's like, well, I brought it home and it was broken. You broke it. You brought it. I didn't break it. It arrived broken. And they have no return policy at all. If you have something shipped from IKEA, you are on your own. Um, and something else, too, that. Well, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say mostly, I mean, I think they break because it's it's just glued sawdust, isn't it? Most yeah, of it? yeah, yeah. And they just take sawdust, put glue, and just hold it together. Right, yeah, it really is pretty bad. But I outfitted my entire house with Ikea when we first got married, and then I sat. That's every People too. joked, we broke the bed, my wife and I, and they were like, oh, yeah, newlyweds. Like I'm like, no, no, I just literally uh, laid down, and it snapped <laughs> right down the middle. I'm like, I wish yeah. there was some story. It's just bad <laughs> Swedish design, okay? There's nothing <laughs> sultry. <laughs> Um, and it's true. True story. You can go, but people can use the time machine, go back on my Twitter. Uh, so let me ask you this, though, too. Another term we were just talking about in the morning show this week, the eco-socialism is something that's also kind of a new buzz phrase. They just want to rebrand so you have democratic socialism, Swedish-style socialism. Eco-socialism is another point that I think, if I'm not mistaken, you address in your book. So, and we hear that from AOC a lot. Yeah. It, in, the first, in, the, in the first chapter, I define the words. And I think the most important thing is that uh, socialism cannot escape its history. And people will say, oh, no, well, those are communist countries. Actually, communism has never been done before. Communism uh, is not a step that anyone has completed. In fact, Soviet Union was the uh, what United or Union of Socialist uh, Soviet States. Right. 
Um, and so it, it's a Soviet system is the socialist system. Cuba is a socialist, not communist. Mm-hmm. Communism is once there is no gun behind it, once everybody's in that utopia where we all just put our money down and we're all working together and everybody owns everything. It's never gotten there. Right. It never gets past the socialist part. No. So the important thing to remember is that socialism is the part with the guns. Right. If it's not, if you're looking at some place like Sweden, they would have had to go to guns if they weren't Swedish. Right. They would have had to go to guns. Instead, they just got rid of it and went to capitalism. Mm. Right. So it's it's the part that always ends in Venezuela. And right. nobody will ever admit that. But that's the important thing. Well, I, I think it's also important uh, to bring up, like you said, the USSR. I mean, a big part of that was uh, Sandals Resorts didn't want to share their profits. They, we have Bernie coming in here uh, on a honeymoon and uh, listen, <laughs> yeah. we, uh, you, we, 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 we eat what we kill. Um, it, it happens. It happened the same thing in Canada, you know, to a lesser extent, <laughs> where I lived there under a universal health care system, a socialized health care system in Quebec. But, and apparently Quebec is, when I did the video uh, back in 2009, Canadian health care, People said, oh, you're biased. You just picked the worst hospitals in Canada. I said, the Charlemagne Hospital, that's where I went. That's literally down yeah. the block from where I, this is, I went to all the hospitals from that I went to place. in my municipality. Yeah. Um, there was no privatized <laughs> health care at all. Uh, it was illegal until there was a Supreme Court case in 2005, Shoei versus Quebec, and I've talked about this quite a bit, where they said it's a violation of human rights to force people into these waiting lines, and if they want to pay for care, and they are at death's door, they have the right to. That didn't exist when I was there. So my mother was looking at like wow. 11 or 14 months for an MRI mm-hmm. to see a dermatologist was nine months for me. I mean, it, it, it was incredibly long and I lived under that. And I think a lot of times people take the most severe example. If it's Maoist China and I go, hold on a second, you don't have to. I think two Americans understanding the reality of socialism light would be uh, scary enough. Mm hmm. I think the um, uh, what the, you don't hear is, for instance, right now under COVID, you don't hear the private sector begging the British government to please let us make masks. Let us let us help you with the vaccine. Please let us do this under the NIH in Great Britain. They can't without a government exception. Right. And the government doesn't want to make an exception. That's insanity. Yeah. And if you if you really, truly love the socialist system, watch where the vaccine, watch where the medicines come from, because they're not going to be coming uh, from Venezuela. They're not going to be coming most likely from Canada. They're going to be coming from a free market. Yeah. Uh, and we are we are not even the most free now. Sweden, when it comes to when it comes to business, Sweden is more free than we are. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't know that. Again, from being a Canadian, I remember when Barack Obama was president, Canada, for the first time ever, was higher on the Economic Freedom Index than the United States. And they avoided the housing bubble because their prime minister, Stephen Harper, just said, wait, hold on, give loans to people who can't pay it back because racism or something? We're not going to do that. They still need 25% yeah, down. We're gonna, right. They That's just said no. That's a bad idea. Yeah. And they avoided it. So even this is the one thing, too. Usually when socialist countries avoid catastrophes that we face here, it's because they're more conservative on that specific issue. Um, and speaking of that, mm-hmm. I, I want to go to sort of the, the, the COVID topic, obviously. If people look at the death rates per capita, you, know, you have to remove like Luxembourg or uh, I don't know, a couple of small islands, but large size countries, the top four, France, Italy, Spain, Belgium. Again, three years ago, these were the countries that were being praised for their socialized healthcare system. We would have to multiply our death rate per capita by four times to be close to what they have. Why aren't people talking about this? It's like, to me, this is a great opportunity to look at the, the perils of socialized healthcare versus a free enterprise system. I have to tell you, Stephen, now is the best time to talk about not only socialized medicine, but also the free market. Deutsche Bank just came out over the weekend and said there is Wait, no how did you such pronounce thing that? as the free market anymore. How did you pronounce that? Deutsche. Deutsche Bank. You do it all properly. Deutsche That's Bank. what I do with my wife when we watch The New Pope. I go, I cannot believe Vajalo. She goes, who? I say, oh, don't talk about Vajalo. He's my guy. That Vajalo. So Deutsche Bank. Got it. Now I feel like an ass. <laughs> well, how do you say Deutsche Bank? How do you say it? I say Deutsche Dutch. Yeah. <laughs> and I know it's wrong, okay. and I'm okay with it. Well, that, this, this is wrong. <laughs> okay. So anyway, the German bank uh, uh, just came out this, uh, this weekend and said uh, that there is no such thing as a free market because of what the Fed has done. Mm-hmm. What the Fed has done is they're now the largest landowner in the world. They own uh, 
all of our debt. They're the biggest treasury uh, uh, financiers now. They own more of our treasury bonds than anybody else. They are going to end up owning everything in the end. The market is not free anymore because there is no bottom. There's no real pricing on anything except for the average person. Yeah. What they've done is they are, are using modern monetary theory, which is a socialist dream. And it's it, chapter six is uh, a chapter that we almost didn't put in because I thought, ah, you know, this is kind of far out there because it would really take a uh, it would take a real disruption to get there. But I tied it into technology and I said, if you get a jobless problem mm-hmm. and technology along with modern monetary theory, you are a 1984 style state, a George Orwell state. Right. This is the utopia that the socialists are talking about. Modern monetary theory is this new idea that you don't have to have the money or even taxes to pay for anything. Just print the money. Yeah. Oh, that sounds brilliant. Uh, along with the the technology that will get in bed with the government to monitor people, which we are doing now, along with joblessness, you have a takeover of the capitalist free system. We've just experienced it. We're experiencing it right now. They're not even they're not even asking for votes on things in Congress anymore. They're going to an empty room. Those opposed, right. the eyes have it. Right. Nobody's in Congress. How are they voting on these bills? It is a scary thought. Uh, I don't usually reference uh, Orwell much. You know why? Because the more I read about him, I was like, I don't like him. He was a, yeah. he was a socialist who then kind of turned, and then he was like, oh, the Catalina. Yeah. I'm like, what about Catalina? Are you talking about the place that was like a socialist, anarcho-socialist syndicism for like no. three years, and then they immediately were wiped out? Don't like it. Think you're full of it. Uh, not you, Orwell. But uh, let me ask you this. Uh, <laughs> you know a lot about the Fed, I and mean, you know a lot more about, like, you focused on this quite a bit. Would it be justifiable at this point to say, okay, China, we're not paying you back until you sort this out? Is that even feasible? Or we're going to pay uh, you not less? Not war, but... Yeah, but you know what? They're little. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in physical stature, not in oh, population. they don't have to build bombs. <laughs> they could drop Chinese people from the sky and win. Right, See, that's uh, true. And the fact is, that the, when you look at how much the government cares about their citizens, they, they would be would, the yeah. ones doing that. That's yeah. the unfortunate thing. I, I want to be really they clear. absolutely would. I'm pro-Chinese people having rights, so I'm anti-Chinese government. No, but go ahead. Exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. And I, I will tell you, the the uh, strategy that China had to beat Russia in a war was take a million troops, march them across the border, and surrender. Yeah. Next day, million troops, surrender. Next day, a million troops. By day three, they've been overwhelmed mm-hmm. just right. by people. Yeah. Um, so you and then they pull out the shivs that they've However, been hiding in their lower intestines. Surprise! Meow! Yeah. Right? That would be a brilliant Trojan horse. I think that, yeah. I, I think that they are, uh, I think this has been as close to an active, war, uh, an active war that anyone else has ever perpetrated on, I think you're on right. other countries in the world. I mean, they have killed more people than we lost in World War uh, One. lost more people than, uh, uh, than the Vietnam War. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it sounds... It It'd be one like thing a, if they said of war, you've destroyed our economy. Yeah, it'd be one. Well, we've destroyed our economy with their help, to be fair. But I, I think it would be different if, if they said, like, our bad, no more wet markets. But instead, they're like, no, 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 no. no. And they blame it on us. Like, take, if they took some responsibility, nothing is unforgivable. But these practices, when we talk oh, about the wet markets, have been reopened. Sorry, go ahead. Stephen, they're also they're also wildly irresponsible, not just with the wet market, but what they're um, all of the things that they denied, all of the information they withheld, and now they're going to countries like France, and France send them a bunch of PPEs and, and masks and everything else. Now France needs some. China is not only not returning those masks, right. they are selling them the masks and saying you can only buy them if you take our 5G. Right. That's insane. I know. That's, it's like, That's a hostile actor. It's like the IKEA return policy of global trade. It is all asshole. 
Hillary that is unacceptable and have a broken bed frame to prove it. Um, I don't know how the Swedes tie into all of this, but sooner or later, I, I want some Swede to answer they will. Yeah. for Ikea. Um, yeah. Let me ask you this, because I know a lot, a lot of people may not like, obviously you were not a, a big Trump guy in the primaries. Neither was I. But at this point, when we're looking at Biden and you're looking at Donald Trump, how would you rate how the president has handled this um, and, and what you think his chances are going into uh, 2020? Uh, compared to Biden. Bi- well, I think Biden. <laughs> Sorry, Biden. <laughs> Biden is, I can't believe that Biden is actually going to be the guy. There's no way he's actually the guy. No. I think it's Governor Nipple Ring. Um, <laughs> there's no way that Biden doesn't know where he is. No. Uh, he can't be president. No. Um, I think it's one of those things when he actually gets to the convention, everybody will be like, okay, come on, guys. I mean, I, he was a placeholder. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. There's somebody else. Uh, so I don't think he'll be the guy. Um, if he is, he loses. Donald Trump, I think uh, I wasn't a fan of his, but I've grown to be a fan of his. And then on top of it, the media has made me even more of a fan of his. Right. Because they've been so grossly unfair and just really sick. Yeah. Uh, what they're doing now. I think he's done a really good job. I like the fact that he has pushed all of the power back to the states, that he hasn't taken, you know, uh, any of the opportunity to nationalize anything. Yeah, I, agree. I don't like the spending, but I also don't like shutting down the economy. And it's constitutional to. You know, I think that's important to note back because to people you've taken it from as people who were both against the b- bailouts and the big stimulus bill. When we talk about, you know, 2009, where we started to know each other, that is very different from the government stepping in and saying, shut down your business. Hey, everybody else, do not go to that business or a church or we will fine you. You prohibit people from making a living. Restitution there is not the same as simply paying out businesses that were going to go bankrupt anyway. Exactly right. And I think people need to understand that's never been incongruent with a conservative worldview at all. No, the government is the government is the the responsible player on uh, the failure of all of these businesses that will fail. All of the unemployment that we had over three and a half percent is because of the federal government and their action. Right. Uh, And when they take away your right to be, you know, even in some cases, stupid, you know, I want to be in New York City and I'm going to have my hot dog stand right there in front of the hospital. uh, if they take away your right to do it, then they owe you the money that you could have earned. Absolutely. Um, it would be like if in, Bernanke took a steaming dump in a cracker barrel. If he took a, if Bernanke took a steaming dump right in the middle of a cracker barrel table, right in the middle of the the, the uh, general store, and then walked away laughing. Like, no, 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 Bernanke, you got to pay for this. You're the one who mm-hmm. took the you took the giant steaming crap right here. This wasn't us. No one's coming here because of your. <laughs> Dump. No, my knickknacks are dirty. Where, where, where do I put the biscuits? I don't know yeah. if that's an analogy that drives it home, but I tried. I think that I think that I don't think you can uh, say anything else. Uh, about. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I can say this because we're already 25 minutes in. The book is Arguing with Socialists. It's available wherever books are sold. Of course, Amazon. Uh, if you have a Barnes & Noble cafe that happens to be open, yeah, yeah. go there, wear a mask, show uh, Glenn Ikea. Beck. Oh God! Who knows? Oh Ikea. God! No, no, no! Did you translate you have this to, to put Swedish? it together yourself? No, no. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, you just no. kidding. It just it just comes with a pen and cliff notes. And it's like see if you can reconstitute this. Uh, all right. Well, listen, Glenn. I know you're busy. We are busy. I appreciate it. And uh, I am going to once Thank you me. send this book, uh, I am going to read it. I I'm looking forward to it. To you. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you, Glenn. You. All right, we have to go, everybody. We Thank will you. see you tomorrow morning. Good morning, Mud Club. Oh. P-O-G. 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 P